what I talked about at the meeting and what we, my uh, colleagues at the molecular imaging group here at the NCI and I have published on before is that we're in a, a new era here in prostate cancer where we're defining metastatic disease using PSMA uh, PET technology or imaging technology. And that's very valuable, especially in newly diagnosed patients where this can help maybe avert some of the side effects of um, definitive surgery or radiation in patients who are metastatic. And I think that's wonderful. I think one thing we have to be cautious about, though, is that we don't understand the dynamics over time of PSMA PET findings in patients with recurrent prostate cancer. So these are patients with uh, rising PSA after surgery or radiation, and we used to call these patients BCR, or biochemically recurrent prostate cancer. And the standard of care for them was to either watch them or consider hormone therapy. There was no clear data that any of these interventions would improve survival. With PSMA PET technology, we are now able to take those BCR patients and define microscopic and often clinically insignificant disease. And there is no data actually on how to treat these patients. Many people are defining these patients as metastatic or metastatic castration sensitive prostate cancer and aligning them with trial results from things like uh, Stampede and Charted and Latitude. But indeed, patients on but the majority of patients on those trials required conventional imaging of CT scan findings or technetium bone scan findings to be eligible for those trials. So the data that people are using or applying um, to patients with PSMA findings doesn't really apply to that population. And what we're potentially doing is escalating toxicity in a population that we used to watch for years before they had clinically significant disease. There's also great enthusiasm to radiate isolated findings in these patients. Um, I will quote um, Dr. Pete Ost, who uh, gave a great presentation at ESMO that highlighted basically the data in this is limited to about a couple hundred patients, if that, uh, and very limited. And we don't truly know the benefits of that, although that is almost the de facto standard of care. So the missing part of the data is something that we hope to uh, provide some answers to here at the National Cancer Institute with an upcoming trial that hopefully launches this month in March. And that is a trial where we will do sequential PSMA scans in patients whose PSA is, is either slowly moving or, or um, has a very slow doubling time and just monitor those patients over time to better understand the natural history of uh, prostate cancer in patients with PSMA positive findings and negative CT and technetium bone scans. Uh, patients from around the country can enroll. What we'll do is we'll get baseline imaging. If the PSMA PET is initially positive, we'll share the results with the patient and the doctor, of course. But we will then uh, follow them at, at, with repeat scans every six months. And if they're negative up front, we'll get another scan in a year. And in this way, we will um, you know, really start to learn uh, about the natural history of, of and the evolution of prostate cancer that's only seen on PSMA scans and not other imaging. And again, patients can choose if they want over time to get treatment, if, they, if that's what they like. Um, but if not, they will help us learn about uh, this somewhat new um, manifestation of prostate cancer.